Okay, so here's what we're doing today. So if you haven't seen Ratatosker's new video on the Demon Souls remake, I highly recommend watching that. It's a great video. Um, it really, whether or not you've played the original or the remake, I think it very succinctly expresses why so many, uh, so many fans of the original game are disappointed or angry with the remake. Um, maybe angry is a little bit too uh, exaggerated. I, I kind of get angry about it a bit, but um, it's a great video. Um, but he he doesn't cover the music at all, so um, I'm going to talk about the music in this video. I, we're not going to go through absolutely every single track, I don't think, unless you guys really want to. Uh, I think that would take a long time, and I'd probably just end up repeating myself uh, about a lot of things. But um, we will go through, I think, some of the most egregious examples of what they did to the music. So, before we do that, um, I just want to give a little background. So I, some of you may, I know because most of you guys that that follow me are uh, here for like Elden Ring content. So you may not be familiar with Demon Souls at all or just peripherally familiar with it. Maybe you haven't played either game. Um, so Demon Souls, the original Demon Souls came out in 2009. Uh, this was Hidetaka Miyazaki's big, big project. It was basically thought to be it was kind of considered to be a failure. It was a Sony title. Um, and it, everybody th sort of thought it was going to fail. And so that's part of the reason that it was so unique that they, um, they just kind of, they had the creativity to just do whatever the hell they wanted because they thought, well, it's basically, <laughs> it's going to flop anyway. So we can just throw in whatever we want in there. Um, and that turned out really well. So, I'm just going to, let's see, let me pull this up now. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's turn this image off. Can you, I'm assuming that's coming through all right. Can, if you can see the, uh, this page that I have open, should be able to, I believe. Oh, there's so many things going on. I really need a new computer setup. Okay, so I'm just looking at the um, the credits now. This is on Moby Games. They have uh, credits for a lot of games on there. Uh, this is uh, Voice of Music. This is for Demon Souls 2009. And um, so the, the most important person here is Shinsuke Kida, the composer. And this is really a one-man project. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the stuff here. So you see, here's the musicians. We've got some strings, some brass, some winds, harp. Uh, you don't see listed piano or organ or harpsichord. So it's possible that uh, Kida played those. Um, I think based on how it sounds, uh, it's like very, very strict rhythm in the soundtrack. I'm guessing that it wasn't actually performed. It was uh, just entered into a, uh, a notation software and then played back through that using samples, digital samples, um, which it's a little bit harder to tell with, with keyboard instruments because um, they're sort of more, more regular in the tone that they produce. So uh, you can imitate uh, a piano or harpsichord more closely. Um, either that or he played on, on a synthesizer. Um, but I think it was just a notation software. Um, the important thing that I just want to point out about this is that this means that, you know, they had to print out parts, right? Like he wrote out a score uh, and parts were printed out for the musicians to play off of. They probably used a click track to uh, line things up with the uh, the digital stuff. Oh, I should also mention the the timpani and the percussion. They're also um, 
not listed here. And so that's probably also part of the notation software using digital samples rather than live musicians. So the point is that, uh, you know, the, the process, the way that this went down was that Shinsuke Kita wrote out a whole score um, and then printed out parts for the live musicians and they recorded that in tandem with the uh, digital parts. So there, there was a score that existed. So when we come to the remake, uh, 11 years later, uh, first of all, there's way more people involved. This is just one, what you're looking at here is just one section of this credit. If you just look at how, this is the credits for Demon Souls, the original one. That's all the people that are, not even that, just this. Localization. That's it. That's everyone that's involved. The remake is all of this. Yeah. So, a lot more people involved. Um, and... Um, so what we're looking at, the, um, the important thing, so they used a completely, uh, everything is live instruments. There's no digital samples in the remake. Um, this is the important guy here, Bill. I don't know how to pronounce his name, if it's Hemstapot or, I, I want to say Hem Stop It because I want him to stop. But uh, anyway, this guy is the important one. It says music arranged by, there's also orchestration by this guy, James Charles Fowler, who worked on uh, De Racine and uh, I think maybe Bloodborne um, as just not, not uh, one of the composers, but just a sort of generic audio guy, either, you know, orchest orchestrator or um, audio production person, staff. Um, but anyway, so there was someone involved from from software, essentially. Exactly how much involvement they had is not clear. Um, we also, there's just a lot of different people <laughs> that are that are I involved here. And you can see the kind of uh, corporate, uh, the, the sort of bureaucracy of what's going on, right? You have a senior director of music, you have the score produced by, music recorded by, music mixed by, uh, and then you've got the actual arranger, uh, music editing and implementation. I don't even know what that means. Uh, and an orchestra. I, so like you've got an arranger, you've got an orchestrator, and then you've got editing and implementation. Then you also have like head of creative music affairs, music affairs specialist, senior music department coordinator, uh, music department assistant. So there's just a lot more people involved in the process and exactly who's responsible for what is not totally clear. Um, so we can turn this off now uh, and go back to our nice image because this is more attractive to look at. So, um, so, the, so the, the point that I'm making there is first of all that the original uh, Monty Mud, yeah, uh, the original is a much smaller team, obviously. Uh, it was a Sony title, so when the remake came along, it was a big Sony production. So Blue Point was responsible for, um, you could say that they, they sort of spearheaded the operation, but, you know, there's like a thousand other people involved from Sony in the remake as well that aren't specifically working for Blue Point. They're, they're Sony employees. So, um, and as far as the, the music is concerned, this is a Sony music production. Uh, Bloodborne was FromSoft's other Sony, uh, what would you call it, um, collaboration. And that soundtrack was also, you know, way more funding than any of the other FromSoft games. Uh, much higher production quality, all live instruments. It was a big deal. Um, the remake for Demon's Souls, the, the thing that I just wanted to get across there is, first of all, trying to figure out who's responsible for the creative decisions. And I think that's a little hard to say because um, 
there's so many people involved that it's not clear, you know, who's who's really directing things. Maybe it's Gavin Moore. Maybe it's the creative director. Maybe he's the one that's uh, telling the music, the composers exactly what to do. Or maybe he's a little hands off. Um, maybe it's all internal to Sony and they just did their own thing. Maybe it's all this guy, Bill Hem, stop it. Uh, maybe, you know, he wrote something and then someone else edited it and then someone else did something else to it. So it's kind of hard to say. Whereas we can say with the original that it's just pretty much all Kida. Um, as far as Shinsuke's Kida's background is, uh, before Demon Souls, he did a few, he did the music for a few Japanese television shows. And since then, he's also done some television shows, some movies. Um, not a huge name, pretty small time uh, composer, uh, has done a lot of collaborative stuff under pseudonyms uh, with, with different bands, uh, a lot of different genres. Um, there's not much information about him. I think he's got a, a kind of jazz background as far as I can tell. Uh, but... Oh, the, the other thing that I wanted to get across was that with the remake, that basically the, the process for how that must have happened is that the, you know, this team, this Sony uh, production team, um, PD, SG Music, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Worldwide Studios, Product Development Service Groups, PD, SG Music, uh, what an amazing name, um, that they got a score from the original game and then they reimagined the soundtrack so that mostly in their in their press they refer to it as a reimagining uh sometimes it's an arrangement um so when you make an arrangement of a piece of music you have to essentially create a new piece like you can't uh, especially if you're arranging it for more instruments or, or just for different instruments. Uh, it's like, like doing a cover, like you're, you're kind of creating a new thing. Uh, and it has to be, it has to be judged uh, that the quality of that thing has to be judged on its own terms. And it's not just a, a copy of the original. Uh, now it, they could have made a copy, um, is one of the points that I want to make. They could have just taken the score, recorded it with live musicians, you know, had, had a higher production budget and basically have note for note the same music, but in higher quality. That's something that they could have done, um, but they decided not to. Um, they probably had more money than they knew what to deal, than they knew what to do with. Uh, one of the things that in their press they're very proud of is the fact that they were able to use the organ at the Temple Church in London, uh, which is like a famous historical organ. And that's fairly ironic, as I will get to in a bit. Um, and they have, uh, you know, so, so they, they spent a lot of money on, they got the London Session Orchestra, London Voices, uh, and this Temple Church organ. Uh, and some soloists, the solo female singers, and uh, and the uh, organist who works at the Temple Church in London. So, uh, anyway, that's that's a bit of the background. So let's get into the actual differences between the games. So, I think we're going to start with the opening cinematic, because that's what plays right as you open up the game. So let me set that up real quick. And basically the way I'm looking at this is, you know, I'm willing to give some leeway because they reimagined this score that, you know, if it was a great score that was different from the original, that could still, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with that, uh, just because it was different. Um, it's the particular choices that are made, uh, exactly how did they make it different? What did they try and carry over from the original into the remake? So, 
let's see. We've got this going up again, and this is up again. So I'm going to turn down the audio fairly low and uh, just let me know if uh, I'm going to shrink this down so I can see. Hold on. Uh, stop. Why is it doing that? I'm just going to shrink that down so I can see your comments as well at the same time. Okay, so here is the opening cinematic from the original Demon Souls 2009. And uh, just tell me if the audio is alright or if you want me to pump it up or down. So we get no music for the titles, or rather for the uh, for the different companies. And right then we get the timpani. Okay, so let's just take that for an instance, uh, for an example. Up about 5 to 10% maybe? Sure, I'll turn it up a bit. Smidge louder, okay. Uh, let me know if this works now. And we're going to play the opening to the remake. Okay, PlayStation Studios. Again, no music for the uh, the company titles, and no timpani now. Okay, so, yeah, this intro is quieter, sorry about that, I didn't realize they weren't balanced. Uh, so, I don't know if you noticed there, but, oh, different resolution, this is so weird. Uh, the video isn't super important. Um, there's nothing, I'm not going to really talk about the, the matching of the video and audio, so whatever, that, I don't really, I wouldn't wor worry about it, um, I think I can do that, and that should fix it, maybe. Uh, no, 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 stop. <laughs> God, this is, this is such a... All right, we'll just do that. It looks kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know why everything is zoomed in. Um, sorry. This is kind of a mess. Okay, so um, the the point that I want to get across here... First of all, there's something... This is a very minor complaint, but there's something lost from... Like, in the original, you have... As soon as you get this on the first day... This is accompanied by uh, this timpani, bum bum, right? So it's like, all right, here we go. We're beginning. We're beginning to tell the story, and this is marked by this this timpani strike. The more important thing that I want to point out here is that they changed the rhythm. So w what they did, what first they also they got either got rid of the timpani or they replaced it with like bass drum and, and some other percussion instruments and like a bell because they have those instruments. Um, and you'll find that this is 
a very common thing throughout the remake soundtrack that they're like they really don't like the timpani uh they don't like having simple orchestration they always want to throw more things in there more and more instruments throwing the choir to every single track uh throwing the full orchestra lots of percussion instruments into every single track um and it's i mean the reason for that doing that is basically because you have it there um so but but the the more important thing is that they change the rhythm here uh so in the original you can hear this let's see oh there we go okay now sort of out of time you don't really know where the beat is here but as soon as the voice comes in one two three four down one two three so the the timbani's playing a pickup to the beat bum 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 the the second note is on the beat Whereas in the remake, it's also not in a, I just realized it's not even in time. Like, what the hell? Three. Four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's just like random times. Bum bum ba da. So now that the 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 those two notes are on the beat. So bum bum da da one da da one. So it, this is like a really tiny thing. Um, can I turn it up? Yeah, sure, I can turn it up. I'll, I'll let me play it again. I'll just put put this a little bit louder. But be careful what you ask for, because maybe it'll be too loud next time. Is that all right? Yeah, offbeat versus on beat. So. Yeah, I'm just going to turn off the video cuz So, the thing is, like, I just struggle to understand why you would make that change. I can't say that it's like, oh, this absolutely changes everything about uh, about the music. But why would you change that? Why would you make that different? Why would you turn it from bum bum, da da, bum bum, ba da, to bum bum, ba da? Bum bum ba. Why would you make that change? There's there's literally no reason to make that change except to be different. It's not that isn't like an interpretation of the original music. There isn't there isn't a, this is, you're not just arranging the original music. You're just shifting the rhythm in order to be different, just because you want to be different. It's very weird. And there's, there's a lot of that going on in the soundtrack where the thing is like, okay, if you're arranging a piece of music, you have to figure out or what's the important thing. What's, what should I try? And like, obviously if it's not a copy, if you're arranging it, that means that you're going to change some stuff. So what are you going to change and what are you going to carry over? Um, so what the remake OST generally does is it takes the melodic it, it, it takes like a, a melodic motif or, or a melody and then changes everything else 
changes the the rhythm, changes the time signature, changes the instrumentation, changes the mood of the music, change the the style of the music, uh, all of that stuff. And basically, all that it keeps is this melodic element. And the thing is, that is, uh, like that's almost the least important part. I imagine that, uh, I don't know, if, okay, if you're a fan of, of Bloodborne, imagine that you took uh, Garman's theme or Gwyn's theme from Dark Souls and you just took that melody, like you just took the plin plin plon, da da da, and you turned it into like a techno house beat or something, right? Like that is not the same piece of music anymore. The fact that it's using the same melodic material is so unimportant to what the music is sounds like what the music feels like uh, whether it matches you know what's going on so it's it, there are a lot of decisions like this in the remake soundtrack where they just change something to be different and i don't really know why so let me give you another example of this uh Let's actually switch over to... Da, 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 da. Let's go to Made in Australia. Uh, and I want to go to Made in Australia now because... Um, because th they, in their promotional material, they were like really proud of their reimagining of Made in Australia. They thought that this was great. They thought it was just fantastic, uh, their version of it. And... I disagree. Um, so let's play that. So here's the original Made in Australia from Demon Souls 2009. Let me know if I need to turn up or down the volume. Okay, so let me, there's a few features of this music. So first of all, you've got this harpsichord that's just playing um, constant, let's say, eighth notes throughout the music. I can't sing it, but, um, and it's a kind of off-putting rhythm because it's, it's a pattern of seven. So it's seven notes, which is sort of an odd rhythmic figure. So it's not, uh, you know, normally like a regular rhythmic pattern, you have something like four, three, maybe six. Seven is weird. It doesn't divide equally. Uh, so it it's a little bit uncomfortable, the, the rhythmic af aspect of it. And it's also... The orchestration is very, it's dense in a sense. It's like this harpsichord, it's not getting louder or softer. It's just there. It's this, maybe a wall of sound isn't exactly the right way to describe it, but it's, it's this feeling of constant tension, constant intensity. It's not really going up and down. There isn't any kind of uh, movement upwards. It's not paced. It's not you know, developing, it's not leading towards somewhere. It's just this, it's just a vibe. It's just like, all right, this is a, a weird sort of Baroque feel. It's like listening to a, a piece of, of uh, Bach or something like that, a Bach prelude. It's just, that's, that's the, the atmosphere is we're just going to stay in this stark atmosphere that's slightly uncomfortable. And then you have the bass line, which is constantly going down. So you hear dum bum 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 but it's just keep on going down. So it's like we're stuck in this this stark atmosphere and it feels slightly uncomfortable because of that rhythm 
and then the the bass line is taking us down and down and down and it's just horrible just a horrible horrible feeling but also it's it's like uh because of the harpsichord and because of that kind of stoic way that it's being played it's it feels elegant as well so it's sort of it's not it's not like melodramatic depression it's like this stoic depression okay so let me just play that again and you can listen for all those all those elements So there's the bass line going down. And the violin's just holding a single note. It's just keeping up the intensity. And the violins are still holding even when the rest of them drop out. And it just never stops. It's it's just this one feeling. It's like it's like a block. It's not changing at all. Right? There's slight differences to the instrumentation, but this repetitive it's like you're going slightly insane because it's just this one idea constantly repeated it's not it's actually not too dissimilar from the uh, the exorcist theme it's it's that sort of feeling it might might have inspired this as well so that's the original music it's stark it's it doesn't develop it's just one idea it's both sort of depressing but also elegant okay so now let's hear how this brilliant rendition is done in the remake oh one thing i should point out is that in the remake all the boss music has a little intro because in the original game the music doesn't start playing until after the cutscene is finished so there's a boss intro cutscene and then the boss starts uh, the boss fight starts in the original, the music starts playing once the cutscene is over, when the boss fight starts. In the remake, they added in this musical intro for the cutscene, which I don't really have a super strong feeling about that um, in principle. But anyway, I'm just pointing that out. So the way that this track starts is not exactly... Uh, it's not the beginning of the, of the boss fight. Uh, it's not doing the same thing as the original track. Okay, here is the remake.
Okay, I think we can just talk about that. So, there's several things that are just confusing to me. First of all, the music has been changed to a compound meter. So it's in it's in three rather than in two, right? The original... I can't sing it. It's one and two and three and four and one, right? So it's it, it's in duplets, whereas the remake is in triplets. Da 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 da. Again, why? Why do that? Why change? Like, it, it's not as if those are the same thing. It's not as if those are you know produce the same feeling. Like compound meters, that's used for dances and and things like that. It's it's not a it's not this stark feeling so okay why change it to a compound meter and then the music is it has all these swells and it's swirling about it's like a big crescendo and then a diminuendo it's it's going up and down and it's leading to somewhere and then the harmony changes to kind of lead you into the next section it's a totally different uh, atmosphere than that stark unchanging atmosphere of the original Right, and that that's serving a narrative purpose in the original, like the the original soundtrack. It's the whole point of this boss fight is it's a total, it's a total subversion of what you expect from a boss fight, right? Like, especially at the time now. Now Fromsoft has done this several times, but especially at the time, that's so un, unexpected to have this this boss. That I mean, okay, if you haven't played the game, spoilers, I guess. But I mean, the thing about the boss is that. You know, you fight Garl Vinland, but then rather than fighting Maiden Astraea, she kills herself, right? That's a that's a crazy thing for a boss to do. A boss shouldn't kill themselves, right? <laughs> and and it's this, and you know, she's she's not exactly a good person precisely, uh, but she is a sympathetic character. I mean, you're meant to feel something with this boss fight where it's. It's a horrible, horrible situation, but she, you're not meant to feel like, oh, what an epic fight this is. You know, how, how uh, fantastical this, this magical land is. Uh, I feel so emotionally thrilled by this, this situation. It's supposed to be like, wow, this is crazy. What the heck? Why, why did this, this maiden just killed herself? And now I feel like, horrible for for taking her demon soul you know take it <laughs> you know she's she's like she's she's uh she's resigned to her fate you know we, when we kill Garl Vinland she's like oh you killed him oh you you son of a bitch <laughs> like you killed him all right well take your demon soul then uh, here I I don't you know, I see that I've lost. It's a, it's a horrible, horrible feeling. And that's, the music is setting an atmosphere. It's not telling a story. It's just setting this atmosphere for that moment. And it, that's why it doesn't change. It's not leading to something. It's not dramatic in the sense that it's, it's, it's got like ups and downs. It's just this one block of sound. The remakes music it sounds like you're you're in a fantasy world, uh, traveling the the high seas or something. Like, let me just play some of this again. Let's see. It sounds like like uh, like we're in the Rings of Power TV show or something, and we're traveling the hills. It's it's like a I can imagine big helicopter shots of of a fantastical landscape, you know. It's a completely different, different idea to the original. And again, why? I mean, I'm not saying that you can't change the music. If you're arranging it, you you have to introduce it. Although, again, they didn't have to arrange it. They could have just copied it over. That like they could have done that. Um, but if you are arranging it, like why would you change the whole atmosphere of the music? You could change it in ways that don't affect that. You could you could maintain that that sense of starkness and uh, that like singular atmosphere, 
That's not, it's not developing or anything like that. You could have maintained that in an arrangement and made it interesting. And I, I, just to be clear, like, I don't think this is a bad piece of music. This is really well written uh, in many ways. Um, but it, yeah, it doesn't, exactly. The music sounds good on its own, but it doesn't fit the actual boss fight at all. Exactly, Mattis Miswati. Uh, exactly. They just didn't, they didn't get what was going on there. And I don't know, I don't know how involved the, I don't know how, how involved the, um, either composer was in terms of the narrative. Like, there isn't any information as far as I, I've been able to find on how closely Miyazaki worked with Kida, like what sort of directives uh, he gave. I think, you know, it could range from anything like, well, maybe they have a paragraph or something describing each character, uh, maybe a piece of concept art or something like that. Um, or they might have had super long, detailed conversations about uh, what he wants, you know, the feeling that he wants to achieve with this boss fight and how the music can reflect that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I don't know what that was like for the remake. But it feels a lot like Bill Hemstop it. Uh, the the guy who arranged the music for the remake uh, didn't play Demon Souls because I don't think you could make the musical decisions that he makes uh, in this soundtrack if you played Demon Souls uh, either either that or he just didn't like Demon Souls he thought oh, whatever let's let's make this music actually cool uh, instead of shitty like it sounded that that that. I'm more. I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and just say that he didn't play it. I, actually, I don't know if that's worse or, or better, but uh, it's just so. It's a confusing decision. Th that's those are all confusing decisions. And there's lots of little things that are also confusing. Like, why change the? Um There. You hear that? Dum, bum, 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 bum. They change it to a D sharp instead of a D natural. Right? So So that that scale in the original, that scale it's a it's it's a a minor seventh instead of a, a major seventh. Dum, E minor with a with a D natural instead of a D sharp. And that gives you a certain it gives it a certain sound. It's like a, a church mode. It's a it's the way that you would write uh, like medieval church music. It, that gives that scale gives it a particular sound. But then they just decide, well, whatever. Let's just turn it into a D sharp because that makes it more dramatic uh, or something along those lines. But it's just such a mindless decision. It's such a mindless decision. So, okay, let's let's move on from Maiden Estrella, and I just I can't get over the fact that it's it's like it's mindless decisions in pursuit of changing the music to something that has a completely different atmosphere. Okay, let let's let's move on for now. So, uh, Let's see, which one do I want to go to next? It's the opening cinematic. The narration. Yeah. I guess we could listen to a little bit of the narration. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Let's see, how do we get over there? God, some of these designs are just... Where was that? Look at this guy. Look at this blobby yellow guy. And then look at this horrible fleshy thing with giant tits. Like, what the hell were you thinking? That's just so... It's so stupid. Like, how do you... How do you do that? I don't understand. I literally don't understand the thoughts that go in your head 
when you do something like that. Oh, God. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, I made it in black. Um, again, so strange, some of those decisions. So let's let's go to the... Uh, bu -bu -bu where is the music again? All right, let's listen to... So this is the narration. I'm just going to play the music for the narration because I'm not... The narration itself, I think... Um, there's qualities to the original and qualities to the, the remake in terms of the voice acting, which are better or worse. Um, I think the, the video intro is completely... Actually, maybe I do want to mention that because that's, that's so cringe. Uh, okay, let's see. Let, let me find this again. So the original... All right, we get the King crackling Alan fire. The 12th, by channeling the power of souls. So there's, there's a couple couple ideas going on right here. Let me let me just point this out. So you, first of all, the first thing we hear is this crackling fire, and it's coming out. King it's Alan like slightly. The it's slightly by um. Uh, what would you say? It's like slightly out of focus. It's very dreamy. It's just in a black void, you don't really see anything. By channeling the power of souls brought unprecedented And there's this sepia, you've got this film grain effect going on. Bonitaria. So the, the whole idea is like, it's basically the the visual and auditory equivalent of Once Upon a Time, right? This is like, uh, okay, sit down and listen to this story. We're about to tell you a story, right? That is until the colorless deep fog swept map, across the land. Sepia tones. Boletaria was cut off from the outside music world. Track. And those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. And it's very, it's very sort of regal and but uh, of the antique royal sounding. It's just strings alone. Broke playing. It almost sounds like, like Vivaldi uh, Four Seasons. Flight. That the old king Alant had aroused the old one, the great beast below the nexus. It's it's very classic fantasy. Like we're going back once upon a time. Let me tell you this story. That's the whole the whole vibe that's being communicated here. Okay, so now we go to the remake. King Alant the Twelfth. Just instantly, she starts king talking, Alant and the we've got this like CGI I fire. The power of souls. It's. King Alant the Just Twelfth. what? What the hell? How the how do you screw souls. that up? King Alant the Twelfth by channeling the power it's of It's so embarrassing. How do you not understand what that what that's trying to communicate? How do you not understand this? King Alant the Twelfth by channeling the power of souls brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his like, northern I, kingdom. I can understand, okay, if, if you see, well, like, okay, that, that doesn't look that different, but it's, all the nuance is gone. Like, all, it, now we've just got, we've just got, like, this totally realistic CGI fire that's in, like, an actual location, like... All of those sepia tones and film grain effects are gone. We don't get the, this like deep crackling. It's it's a much more uh, King Alant the Twelfth. Like you I barely hear the fire the at all. Like all those little details, that is there to provide an atmosphere. That it's it's achieving a certain effect. It's it's to make you go like, ah, we're going back in time. We're we're going to this this fantastical world. Like this is the introduction to this fantastical world, right? And this this remake, it's just so, it's so lacking any nuance or understanding King of what the original Alan was the doing. Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria 
was cut off from and the music the is like world. mixed incredibly and low which is very weird the deep fog okay so now Never. we're just gonna go to the music itself because ugh, I just annoys it annoys the hell out of me uh so where is it okay so let's let's listen to this this music from the original so it's strings alone it's very strict it's like a, m a march almost it sounds like baroque music like vivaldi or bach it's very simple because you're not meant to be really paying attention to it it's just setting up this atmosphere again Very simple. It's not, there isn't, you know, they've got more instruments than the ones that are playing right now at his, you know, that are available, uh, but he's not using them because he wants it to be very simple. Because this is an introduction. It's not meant to overwhelm you. It's just introducing you to this world. That's it. Very simple. Okay. So, now the remake. What? Throw in the choir. Why not? Why not? It wasn't epic enough. Why? Just why? I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Like, oh, you know what that music really needed? It was a horn going. Dur, dur, dur. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? Oh, this this part that that was like two instruments before. Let's add a whole bunch of percussion and and like flesh out all the, the the bass parts and make it sound really epic and then add in some more brass and add in some more choir because it's not epic enough, bro. Like, oh, bro, we need to make it so epic. It's, doesn't it sound so epic the way we're doing it? It's so so epic. What an epic game. Oh, God, I just can't can't stand it. It's so mindless. It's so mindless. I don't. <sighs> okay. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand what they were thinking or if they were thinking. Throwing that Latin for fake translation videos. That, okay, thank you for bringing that up. Um, there are, no, okay, there, there was, uh, a, a kerfuffle a while back about um, Elden Ring's soundtrack. Someone claimed that that uh, you know they had translated Godskin Apostle and some other tracks. They had translated the lyrics in those tracks. That turned out to be completely fake. Um, and honestly, it didn't even sound believable at all based on what they were singing. But uh, uh, there's a fantastic channel called Antonius Tertius. I highly recommend checking him out. Uh, he's done he's done actual journalism. He's talked to people that work at FromSoft. Uh, he talked to them about the production of Elden Ring soundtrack. Um, th uh, and he, he completely debunked that idea. Um, the guy who originally posted that was presenting it as if he had translated them, but really it was just all in his head. Um, the, the way that FromSoft has written its soundtracks for the most part, 
um, let's say the non-diegetic music, because there is, for instance, the uh, the the Batwomen uh, in Elden Ring, and they are singing actual Latin. Um, but for the most part, the non-diegetic music, in, in other words, the soundtrack, the stuff that is not occurring within the world of the game, that music does not use... Uh, it uses nonsense syllables. Uh, sometimes it's completely syllableless. It's just, you know, oohs and ahs. And sometimes it uses sort of made-up syllables that kind of sound like Latin. Uh, but th it's deliberately meaningless. Um, because I think they realize that that would imply some narrative things that they don't you don't want to get into. I mean, like, does does Latin exist in Elden Ring or Dark Souls or whatnot? Uh, yeah, Bloodborne. I I I'm not super familiar with the the story behind that. I believe that some of the tracks in Bloodborne have real Latin lyrics. Uh, I don't know if it's all of them, um, but I think I remember hearing that. I have I, I haven't listened to to that closely. But what you get in the in the Demon Souls remake soundtrack, it really does sound like there are Latin lyrics to some of these songs. And I don't I don't know if maybe it it is just fake. Like I I can't really make it out clearly enough to tell. Um it would not surprise me in the least if they completely made up lyrics to those songs. But in the original, there are uh, very few tracks with choir, very few tracks with voice. It's actually mostly instrumental. And it's funny because like the FromSoft games are now sort of associated with choir. Um, Dark Souls introduced a lot of choir into the soundtrack. The original Demon Souls soundtrack did not have a lot of choir. Uh, mostly it was all instrumental music. Uh, there is one song with a, a soloist, which was performed by uh, Kokia, who also did the ending credit music for Dark Souls 3. Uh, and there's like Tower Knight. And... Is there another one? Is that it? No one Phalanx, no one Vanguard, no one... Uh, Penetrator was the same as Tower Knight in the original. Not in Armor Spider, not in Flame Lurker, not in Dragon God, not in F Fool's Idol, not in Man Eater, not in Old Monk, not in Adjudicator. Yeah, I, honestly, I think it might literally just be Tower Knight. Uh, don't don't quote me on that, but it's, the the point is very little very little choir, and when they do sing, it's um. It's completely uh, devoid of any lyrics. So the choir, I think, is in every single track in the remake, which is also incredibly mindless in one particular example, and I'm going to get to that. But if they used real Latin lyrics for those songs, like you're introducing a level of lore, and if people actually really cared about the remake... Um, which they don't because it's doesn't have that special quality that the original did. If people really cared about the remake, people could be formulating theories based on those lyrics uh, and what they're saying. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it definitely sounds uh, it definitely sounds like real Latin. And I, I should just let me couch that by saying that it's possible that they consulted Shinsuke Kida and Shinsuke Kida came up with lyrics. It's possible that they consulted Miyazaki. Um, my impression is that they had essentially no interaction with From Software. Uh, Miyazaki has... he you know Both Miyazaki and Shinsuke Kida, after Demon's Souls Remake came out, expressed a sort of generic support for it. Um, they don't really have a choice in the matter because it's a Sony IP, so Sony could do whatever the hell they wanted with it. Uh, they don't... FromSoft doesn't have to be consulted at all. Uh, so they... Uh, I, I don't... I don't think that they were really involved at all in the production of the game and, and the soundtrack. Okay. <sighs> 
let's move on. Uh, let's move on to the music for the Nexus. So, since we're on the picture right now, so the Nexus is a very dreamy sort of place. Uh, not so much in the remake. It's very orange and blue, which is a classic uh, color gradient that's used in lots of action movies. Um, it developed around maybe the m mid 2000s. Uh, actually, the, the first movie that really pops out in my mind is the first Avengers movie, um, which is highly, highly orange and teal color graded. And the idea there is that as science fiction action in particular became more popular, um, orange and teal color grading, or orange and teal are, uh, they're contrasting complementary colors. So they really pop out in the screen. And orange, orange is, a, is a very useful way of bringing out skin tones for characters. Whereas teal is a very good way of bringing out uh, uh, special CGI effects, especially like um, magical stuff or or science fictiony laser beams, things like that. So orange and teal, you see this all over the place. Transformers movies, uh, all, all sort of like schlocky uh, science fiction or fantasy action movies, the kind of big blockbuster things that are so common now orange and teal is the color grading that you use and you bring you bring up the saturation on those uh because it makes everything pop um of course in the context of demon souls this does make everything pop but it also makes everything look completely unrealistic um as opposed to the nexus in the original which although it is it has a dreamy quality it is lit very realistically like those that's the color that candles make they don't make bright neon orange colors anyway i'm just pointing this out because it's another thing that annoys the heck out of me so let's listen to the first track there are actually two tracks that play in the nexus two ambient music tracks uh the the first one plays until you beat i think it's three arch demons and then that music changes so here is Demon Souls 2009, the first Nexus track, and this one is titled Made in Black, which is interesting. Okay, so 
I just wanted to let that play for a while because the important thing about this track is it's the music that's playing while you're in your sort of safe area, right? The Nexus is the hub. It's where nothing really dangerous happens uh, except for one thing, but um, it's... It, oh, yeah, a great... Exactly. I'm glad you picked up on that, Saucy Pup. Actually, genius how the instruments join the melody on harp as it comes in and out. Breathing, almost. Yeah, and it's the same idea as uh, Firelink Shrine, except it's um, uh, Firelink Shrine from, from Dark Souls 1, that is. The point is, this, what the music is trying to achieve is, it's a feeling of both comfort and slight uns a slight feeling of, of being unsettled, right? So... It's these little musical I don't know, fragments, right? They're, they're not really... It's just really one chord with a big silence after it. But the music, like the way it's going down, the, the bass line keeps on going lower and lower and lower, just chromatically descending, and the music keeps on shifting into strange harmonies that you're not expecting. It's not, it's not staying just perfectly diatonic to the key, it's it keeps on shifting, going to an unexpected place. And so there's this sense of, of slight... Trepidation is too strong a term, but it's it's there's a little bit of like anticipation. Like you're, you're never really sure what the next chord is going to be. It's going to... As soon as the music settles down into one place... It keeps on going lower, and then and then it takes you into another place. So it's it's like this ever continuing rolling downwards thing. But there's the the really important thing is those spaces in between, because first of all, it's not getting in the way of you hearing character dialogue. It's not distracting from that. Uh, it's just this sort of repetitive idea in the background. It leaves all this open space for you to hear the ambient sound of of the world and, and of the character speaking. So respite. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. It's respite, but, and also it, it's slightly, it's slightly unsettling or slightly unsettling is even too strong. It's, it's slightly eerie or uncertain. Maybe uncertain is the best word to describe it. It's like it never, it never lands in one particular place or when it does land, it just keeps on going down further and further. It never, it never stops. It's just continually cycling through these, this, this progression, this chord progression. Um, so let's listen to the, the remix version. Uh, 
Uh, you hear it now? We're finally at the music. So, <laughs> I mean, the thing is like, yeah, so that's, that's in my, my version of the track. I don't know why. Uh, I don't think that's in the game. I think that's just the, the one that I downloaded. I don't know why. So the thing is like, that is a really gorgeous piece of music. I think that sounds beautiful, but what the fuck? <laughs> like, is that, how, why? Again, like, why, why would you, why would you change that so dramatically well like that is that n does not resemble in the slightest the original music why yeah uh mads maswati you you nailed it there's no reason to include a choir in a track when literally nothing is happening yeah that's the point the dr there is no drama in the nexus i mean there is one very specific thing dramatic thing that happens or character dramatic thing um but the uh there is nothing happening in the nexus the point of the nexus is that it's it's a place of respite it's totally unrelated to this crazy dramatic world out there it's like a it's like a dream that you're having to escape from from the hor horrors of of the real world i hate that they almost Counting the original melody almost as a second thought, like, oh, in the end, throw in something close to the original. Yeah, it's just a, like, it's an afterthought. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's an afterthought. They're not, but I, it, to me, it's not really that important. Like, I would care less if you totally, if you didn't bring in the melody or the chords of the original at all, if you maintained the same idea. Like, what's important is what the music is doing. The music of the original is doing a very specific thing. It's making you feel making you feel comfortable and also slightly unsettled. It's being there as background and also keeping your interest but not distracting you, leaving the sound open for the diegetic sounds of the Nexus and uh and, and the character dialogue. Like it's it's deliberately simple. What it's doing is it's not it's not trying to like this this remake soundtrack. It's like a whole story. It's like you just added in a whole story there. Like that piece of music is so there's so much development going on. Yeah, exactly. Sa Saucy Pop, you you said it. It's so developy. That's so many different parts. It it's developing this whole story that it's telling. And it's like what what is this story about? This story did not exist in the original. I don't know what that, what you're trying to tell me with this. And I also think it's, there's something distracting about the fact that it's, uh, it's using a choir because the way that you, like your ears are designed to latch on to a human voice in a way that they don't for I instruments. The, the human voice like attracts your attention in a way that it doesn't for, for instruments. And you automatically associate that with, with like humans. It's, it's a human voice. So when I hear this track, I'm just thinking like, who, who are these people? Who, what is this? Who, who, is, who is singing here? Like what, where is this coming from? Uh, it's not just like wallpaper setting a mood. It's like this whole narrative now. And it's just, and it's, again, I want to say it's, it's a gorgeous track. I think it sounds really nice, but why? Uh, okay. It gets worse. 
So, after you beat three archdemons, the music in the Nexus changes. And it changes to become more dramatic and more strident, more stark, less comfortable as you are it's reflecting your progression through the game. And by the way, it doesn't have to be any particular archdemons, it's just the the it's a reflection of how much you've progressed. Uh so this is the track that, that plays when it changes. Okay, so a couple things going on here, right? So you can hear, obviously, it's a development of the first track, right? You've got these big pauses in between. But now we're on organ, which has a much more sort of austere sound uh, than, than just the harp and, and strings from before, right? So it's, it's like, it's a little more dramatic, but we've still got that same idea, like this little musical fragment that uh, uh, this little musical fragment, oh no, no data. Okay, um, sorry, Th this little musical fragment with a big space in between, except it's a development because now instead of playing one chord, it's doing two. So it's still doing this like this arpeggiation, so we're the bong, gong, gong, gong in the first track. Now it's do, 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 do. it's still a sort of this arpeggiated chord, but then it resolves, it changes. And also the harmony, instead of just continually going down and down and down and leading to unexpected places, it's a little bit more centered. It like it keeps on going back to the same the same resolution. It keeps on resolving to the same key. We're much more clearly in one place. But it's it's so it's it's taking what came before and it's developing it, which is a great idea because that's it's a development, right? The, the it's a development of your character, and it's a development of the place, and the music is reflecting that. So, let's hear what happens in the remake.
Okay, so like, what? Uh, now you just decided to essentially copy the music. The, the, you know, that's that's note for note the same music. Uh, the few changes, the choir has been added, and, and there's some like swells happening. It's crescendoing up and diminuendoing down, but it's the same music. So. The thing is that now that connection to the previous track is completely lost because you don't have that anymore. The the silence, that doesn't mean anything in this context because it doesn't relate to the previous track because you didn't have the silence in the previous track. The, de the development of this organ sounding more strident, well, first of all, because you add the choir and the choir is basically covering up the organ, uh, th that loses it. It sounds a lot softer. But that's also not a development from the previous track, which was more, more peaceful. So like you just completely lose that connection between the two tracks. Now they're totally different tracks in the remake. They're like totally unrelated. And now it sounds like the second track is less active. It's more peaceful than the first. It, it achieves the opposite effect. Right, the first track is like there's all this stuff going on. There's this whole story being told in the music. In, in the remake, and then once you progress through part of the game, the Nexus becomes more peaceful and more relaxed. That's so... It's so mindless. It's so mindless. It's so thoughtless. And then there's another element to this, because the organ is actually really important in the original Demon Soul soundtrack. So this track... This track is also very important because not only is it indicating a progression of the previous track, but it's also leading to another track that's coming up, which is also played entirely on solo organ, which is the penultimate boss of the game, False King Alant. played entirely on organ. So that that organ in the Nexus, it's it's leading you to this track. It's leading you to this final boss battle. What a fantastic track. Uh, oh, and you know what? I should have been putting up the... Uh... There we go. Yeah, hold on. So this is, that's, this is what's playing there. Let me just play a little bit more so you can see it with the visual. Right, and this is, this is a version of the opening cinematic. Uh, the pre-main menu cinematic, that is. So it's clear like Kida, I don't know what his background is, but it's clear that he was inspired or directed to to be inspired by music of Bach, Vivaldi, Baroque composers. It's a very common influence in a lot of Japanese music, actually, especially from uh, sort of, I would say maybe starting early 2000s. Uh, a lot of anime music draws on it. Um, a lot of video game music from uh, Japanese developers draws on it. Uh, mix A mixture of Baroque music, like Bach and Vivaldi, Couperin, Rameau, uh, and, and like jazzy elements or more dissonant elements added to that. And it's, it's a very... 
that type of music is it, it's very pure. You listen to Bach and, you know, it's not, it's not overtly expressive music. It's not super dramatic music. It, it doesn't achieve its effects through giant crescendos and uh, super impressive uh, sound effects and, and uh, percussion. It's, it achieves its effect through this sort of purity of the music. And that, that gives it a kind of stoic quality, which can be very effective in setting an atmosphere. That's the kind of atmosphere that's being set here. It's using that very, very simple, stark sound of the organ just playing alone and and developing this this theme uh, to represent the final like the final big obviously there's another boss battle after this, but it's not it's almost not really a battle. Uh, this is the really the final boss, right? This is the Gwyn of Demon Souls. Uh, and it's bringing back our the very first music that we heard, and it's a development of, it's a it's a it's the third part of this development that we heard in the Nexus, right? We first heard harp and strings, and then we heard uh, the organ, and even in this theme, there's that silence, right? Da da, and then there's a silence. Uh. that's where the drama comes from it's just from the lack of music it's that silence in between that's that's where the drama is it's it's from that that silence and so this is a continuation of the music in the nexus that it's meant to feel like a progression so well how do you deal with this now? Because in the remake, we didn't get that progression. We got a downward trajectory from the music in the Nexus. So let's hear the music for False King Alant. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand what, how you, how you don't see what you're doing when you write that. Like this is, yeah, this is what I would describe as action slop. It's just sort of generic action music. 
that and that's so I had such a misunderstanding that I and the thing is I don't I can't I honestly can't tell if this is incompetence or arrogance or like I don't know if they if the composer just wasn't aware of what Demon Souls the original Demon Souls was trying to do either they didn't play it or you know they didn't they didn't get into it uh it didn't attract them whatever um i don't know if they deliberately tried to make the music sound different um but whatever the reason i don't i don't really care what the reason is this is so uh this is so this departs so much from the original that it's not the same idea even remotely like this is just action music you've lost any kind of that that, that sense of progression from the nexus the first nexus theme to the second nexus theme and now this final thing with or and the funny thing is like they in all their promotional material they're so proud of the fact that look we got the temple church organ this famous historical organ look at how they keep on repeating this line about like oh we've got this amazing organ you can't hear the fucking organ like this is this was a solo organ track how did you if you have this opportunity to showcase an incredible organ how why 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 do you do this why it's so stupid i just don't understand it I don't understand how you can be that stupid. And by the way, look at Alant's face. Like, look at how cucky this guy's face is. This new guy, he looks like... He's just got those dead fish eyes. That's all the facial animations in the remake. Looks so disturbing. Like this, the original, it's dramatic. He looks like, like Toshiro Mifune or something like that. He looks... He looks intimidating. This guy, like, I don't know... He just looks like some random guy that I'd see at 7-Eleven. Like, he's not a... He's not a, a dramatic character at all. Which makes the, the uber-dramatic music sound even more ill-fitting. He's got all this ridiculous fantasy armor. He's not wearing, like, this ceremonial costume. Oops. He's not wearing this ceremonial costume anymore. He's, he's wearing this, like, fantasy armor. Why? Because. Because fantasy. Because who cares? Because, dude, isn't it so epic? Isn't this so epic? Oh my god, doesn't it sound so epic? It's so cringe. It's so cringe. It's so cringe to take a game that is like the thing about the original Demon Souls is it's how how unique it is. It's how different it is to everything else out there. Like it's got a totally unique identity that even even though FromSoft has continued m building heavily off of Demon Souls, like that formula, they still have they've still gone more, let's say, safer. They like they still haven't like something like World Tendency, like you punishing the player for 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 losing. Like that's a you know generally speaking, that's that goes against what you get taught in a in a game design class. Like you don't <laughs> punishing the player for losing. That's that's not that's not the the thing that you do, like this is the 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 thing that makes Demon Soul special is is how unique it is that it's got this unique identity that's unlike any other game out there. It's unlike even D, uh, even Dark Souls. Uh, it's got a totally unique identity, and then you screw that up so badly, you just totally miss all of this, all of the nuance. And again, I'm not saying don't make it different. You, you could totally change things. I, I I think it's absolutely possible to change a lot of things, and you you would have to change things if you're if you're remaking the assets from the ground up, remaking the music from the ground up. You could change all the music. You could have none of the original themes come back, and that would still not be as bad as what they did. Because what they did is they took out they they took the soul out of Demon Souls. They took the, the thing that makes it unique and special and they turned it into fantasy. It's like it's like the fantasy equivalent of cape shit. It's just generic fantasy nonsense with generic action slop music that has none of the... Uh, and it's not terrible music either. It's just generic. It's just has no... None of the unique qualities, none of the nuance of the original. 
And they didn't add any of their own nuance. I, I, okay, I should, I should clarify, okay, they did add a couple things that, like, it's an interesting idea to have a, a, a solo female vocalist at the beginning of Made in Australia. That's, okay, that's an in interesting narrative idea. That could have been done well. Uh, it's a cool idea to have, like, anvil sounds in Flame Lurker. Oh, we should talk about Flame Lurker, actually. We should talk about Flame Lurker. And Flame Lurker, that, see, this is, this is, it doesn't surprise me that the remake is, is so unfaithful. I, actually, it surprises me a little bit at how unfaithful it is, because it, it, it reminds me a lot of 343 taking over Halo, where, I mean, it was, it was explicitly the case with 343 that, that they were hired because they didn't like Halo. They hired people that didn't like Halo to make Halo more palatable to people that didn't like Halo, which is such a goddamn stupid idea. But that I get a little bit of that sense with the remake, that it's like people that don't actually like Demon Souls that are remaking it for people that didn't that didn't like Demon Souls. Rather than like people who love Demon Souls remaking it to express the best of what Demon Souls has to express in a modern setting. Like no, that's not it. It's it's a cash grab from Sony. Like, oh hey, we've got this IP. It's been 10 years. Let's remake it and and make it a launch title and we can showcase the incredible uh, graphic fidelity, uh, the incredible polygon counts of the PS5, and uh, and, and and the uh, audio quality of this. Uh, so the the flame worker thing, originally. Bluepoint released a uh, a screenshot of their design for Flame Lurker, and then there was this big backlash because it was just a totally generic design. It was like a Diablo, uh, Doom demon monster, made out of rocks for some reason, uh, and it totally it was totally generic. It didn't have any of the any of the uh, unique details, which are by the way pretty important in FromSoft games. Like, maybe Bluepoint just didn't know this, that, like, FromSoft is very careful about the details of visual design and environmental design. I That's sort of the best faith interpretation of what they did, is that they just didn't know that that was important, which is reflects a level of incompetence and ignorance, which is mind-boggling. But it's either that or that they were so arrogant that they didn't care they were they were maliciously changing things changing details because they thought their version was better uh it wasn't only a screenshot yeah that's right it was a clip there was a clip of it uh but anyway after this backlash blue point went back and they they redesigned flame lurker to make it a little bit more like the original still very generic looking uh they added made one eye uh, a little bit more like the original Flame Lurker. So the current design, let's see. I have some picture of it in here. Yeah, that's not a very good picture, but anyway, the original Flame Lurker, very unique design. It almost looks like he's uh, he's got like exposed muscle, like his skin is burned off. Uh clearly like a guy um and this ties in with the idea that he's probably uh uh i can't remember the name of the character now the the hands of god character he's related to blacksmith edin baldwin uh that's why he's got the stop why did that start playing so that's that's the idea the Remake version, make him, he's like made out of magma and rock for some reason. Like, why? Also, his arena is like this special arena built for him instead of like just this antechamber. Anyway. So let's listen to the the music. Now, the thing about Flame Lurker, the original Flame Lurker, 
is that this is really the only true action boss in in Demon Souls. Like, there's no gimmick, there's no special strategy. There's he's fast, he hits hard, and you have to dodge. Or if you've got a good enough shield, you can block, I suppose. But like, this is the this is like the direction that FromSoft eventually went in with all their games, with all their bosses, pretty much. Uh, that this is an action fight. And the point is that that's a contrast to everything else in Demon Souls. The majority of Demon Souls bosses are what we would now call gimmick bosses. I always think that the, the term gimmick boss is... It's like, if you don't like the boss, then it's a gimmick boss. If you like the boss, then it's a it's a, like a unique experience, let's say. Uh, but regardless. Uh, Tower Knight, Phalanx... Uh, I guess Penetrator is more straight up action. Um, but the majority of bosses are, there's sort of a gimmick or some level of gimmick going on with them. There's some strategy that doesn't rely purely on like your ability to press buttons at the right time and, and dodge and observe the opponent. There's usually something else going on. Flame Lurker is very simple. He's fast, he hits hard. That's the idea. So the thing is, the music... The music is... very unusual for that. For a, a boss that's faster and more action-y than any other boss in the, uh, in the game. So this is the original music for Flame Lurker. Yes, so it's very unusual. Like that's it's a that's a deliberate juxtaposition of unex, unexpected. It's unexpected to hear that music in this kind of a fight. Like you're you are on edge. You tense. You're reacting quickly. You're trying to dodge Flame Lurker, and you get this very. Uh, it sounds like a funeral march, like a dirge. Right, it's like you've got this repetitive drum beat, this this timpani going bum 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 every single beat, and then you've got these low brass instruments that, and they they're playing like Gregorian chant melodies essentially, and they're doing it in canon. There's like it's it's again this sort of ancient Baroque music. That's the the inspiration for it. It's like a it's like a big canon, uh, canon meaning that like one one instrument plays a line and then the next instrument plays the same line but uh, after it. Uh, so they start playing together but they're playing in different times. And, and if you write a canon really well, then it lines up really nicely. It's like uh, Pachelbel's canon. That's an example of a canon. So there's you get a little bit of that with the, the brass instrument. Uh, let's... You can hear it. There, right? So... So you hear that like the da, 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 and then the the uh, is that the tuba playing the ba 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 is doing the same melody but just after the the original instrument is playing it
So there's this very, uh, it's a, it's a antique feeling. It's very somber. It's very low energy in a way. I mean, there's, there's a kind of intensity to it, but it's, it's, uh, the beat of a dragon's heart. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice poetic way to talk, to describe it. It's, it's a very, uh, yeah, Easter song, so de definitely. Um, uh, you've got a Greek name, so that's Greek Orthodox Church music, perhaps. Um, you def definitely some inspiration there, or some similarity at least. Um, so that the, the the point is, it's this uh, sad and somber. It's very low energy, and this is meant to be a deliberate contrast to the way that the boss plays out that the boss fight plays out it's a super fast actiony fiery literally fiery boss like he has very quick animations he hits you very hard he does giant fiery attacks you are on edge you are your heart is beating faster than it does in most other boss fights in the game so now let's listen to the remake Isn't that so epic? Doesn't it sound so epic, bro? So so epic. It sounds so epic. Like wouldn't it be so epic if we had like the, the choir going like oh so epic. It's just so so thoughtless. It's so thoughtless. <laughs> this is what they did to our boy. F in the chat, boys. F in the chat for OG Flame Lurker. It's just so and the thing it's it isn't, yeah, uh, uh, John, you make a, you, exactly the point I wanted to make. It isn't a terrible song. Like, and actually, I don't think any of the remakes music's music is terribly written. Well, there is one example which is really bad in, in my view, but, um, which we're going to get to. But, but I don't think this is a terrible song. And I actually, I like the fact, this is it's so weird because they, their original design they, uh, they, they, in their original design, they totally missed the eye patch, right? They missed the eye patch, which is meant to be a visual clue linking him to the blacksmiths, right? So they missed that. They just didn't realize that that was a thing. Like, it's pretty obvious if you spent any amount of time thinking about the game's lore, which they probably didn't. Uh, but then in the soundtrack, you get the anvil. You get this anvil sound that's ching, you know, it's like a blacksmith would make. So they added this anvil to the soundtrack 
So they they like they're trying to musically actually express that, and that's a cool idea. I think that's a great idea, except that this is that's like that's one little detail that you added to a soundtrack which is totally missing the point. Just like the redesign of Flame Lurker, thoughtless, generic, typical. Yeah, exactly. This one really gives the feeling that they thought they knew better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you watch, watch, I'm going to say it again, watch Ratatoskr's, uh video on the remake. There's a particular quote from Gavin Moore, the creative director, where... He says, he basically, he's so condescending. He basically says like, oh yeah, like in your mind, in your memory, Demon Souls, the original Demon Souls was like, was really good and epic and the music was really good. But uh, actually, if you go back and play the game, it's not, um, I'm paraphrasing, but it's so condescending his attitude. Uh, I, I, it frustrates me to no end. And it frustrates me that, like, there are so many people who, like, Demon Souls is not going to be ported to PlayStation 5. It's not going to be uh, remastered. It's not going to continue its life. Uh, it's not going to be preserved as a game, the original. Uh, you've got this remake, which takes everything interesting out of the art design and music from the original out of the atmosphere of the original. And that's what, you know, modern gamers, that's what the zoomer gamers are going to know. Now that's demon souls. Uh, the youngins growing up now playing, you know, are who don't want to go back and play old games unless it's on the new systems. Who don't own a PS three, uh, who, you know, maybe can't emulate or don't, know that you can emulate or whatever. And this is Demon Souls to them. Is this slop. That's what pisses me off about it. Fortnite? I don't have anything against Fortnite. I mean, I, I, I'm i not a fan of... Uh, uh, I don't, is Fortnite, uh, is there pay to win? I thought if it's just cosmetics, I don't have anything against it. I tried playing it. I couldn't really get into it, but as far as I could tell, it had good, decent gameplay. Um, that was just responding to a comment. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of ones just for quick examples. Cause I want to get to the, the really, in my view, the worst offense of the entire soundtrack but but I want to I want to I want to cover some of the other ones because there's literally every single track there's something problematic let's say um I'm not going to cover them all but okay for instance phalanx okay you got these triplets. That's the characteristic part. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so no, no more triplets anymore. Or th rather, you've got triplets in the in the uh, percussion, but not in the melody. Again, just going in the generic direction. Uh, how about Tower Knight? Remember Tower Knight? Remember how there was this evil, horrible, uh, sadistic guy who, who trapped you and ambushed you by setting up all these guys around you shooting at you while there's a giant knight and then the the soundtrack literally starts laughing at you as soon as you enter the room it literally just goes ha 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 you suck 
you're about to die. Like that's 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 what's going on there. You remember that? Nope. No, no, it's just epic now. Yeah, you thought the music of Tower Knight, you thought that battle was epic? Nah, it wasn't epic. We made it epic, though. Yep. It's no longer laughing at you. It's just a weird... It's like a weird melody that they turned it into. The original wasn't a melody. Like, this isn't a melody. This is... Ha, 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 ha. It's weird. It's, it's visceral. It's laughter. Because you got trapped. It's like jokes on you. You got pranked by... You got punked by... Uh, by... Uh, a fat official and now you have to deal with this situation and that sucks for you that's it's like it's it's almost it's almost like Miyazaki's uh having fun at your expense that's almost exactly like what it is but no no now it's got to be epic it's got to be so epic yeah okay how about uh okay so one of the things they did in the original game in the original game uh, the music for Tower Knight was repeated for Penetrator. Now, you could maybe argue that there is a narrative reason for that, uh, in that they were both, uh, I can't remember the names now, but, you know, they were both originally uh, Knights of Boletaria uh, that then had this sort of demonic form built based on their the myth of uh, you know based on their legends um but in that case it should probably also be there for for phalanx which it isn't um so probably there just wasn't enough budget wasn't enough time to write a separate track for penetrator uh probably wasn't a lot of time to balance penetrator either because that's a that's a very quick fight um so, in the remake, they wrote a new track for Penetrator. They also based it off of, let's say, their version of the Tower Knight track. So, there's a connection there. Oops. Right. Wait. I did the wrong one. Where is it? There we go. This is Penetrator. So it's, um, it's, uh, you know, yeah, that melody that you just sort of made up. And by the way, what I would imagine is the case, I think this is, is, uh, I think this is the case that what, for this track, for the original track, that probably what the choir is singing off of is they... There's probably some music that indicates that they're not really meant to sing exact pitches. But in order to notate the rhythm, you would basically have a note head. So the way that you would write it is probably, instead of having a, like, normally when you write music, you have a note head that's just like a circle. Um, it, you would probably write this as like an X uh, or some other kind of weird way to, to notate that, that figure. Now, if the effect that you want is for the choir to sound like they're just, they're not really singing pitches, you could just write that in the music. You could say, okay, don't sing actual pitches here, just kind of generically grunt. Uh, or you would probably write it out as notes, but you would just change the note head and, and kind of indicate it that way. Um, so there probably is a... In the original score, the way it was written, there probably is, uh, there probably are pitches, so to speak, indicated 
by the way that it was written, which weren't meant to be sung as pitches. They were just an indication of the, let's say, the, the, the shape of the figure. So what I imagine happened, and I, I, this, this may all be wrong, but I think this is probably how it went down. What I imagine happened is that when the uh, arranger, uh, Bill, what was it? Stop it. Stop it, Bill. Um, whatever his name is. When he got the score for the original, uh, he, he saw this figure and he thought, oh, let's turn that into an actual melody. And then that became uh, this music. So those are probably the pitches that were originally written, but they were written in such a way that they weren't meant to be sung as pitches. Um, the only reason I'm pointing that out is because it's so incredibly stupid to turn something that was not meant to be a melody into a melody. I just don't, I don't understand why you would do that. It, the only reason is like, oh, I got to make it sound different. I can't do the same thing. I got to do something different. I got to make it more epic. I got to make it not like the original. I got to distinguish it from the original so that, and you know, we got to use more instruments so that we really take advantage of the enormous budget and the, the orchestra and recording studio and, and all this stuff. Out of topic, but what's your favorite track in Souls? Uh, right now my favorite track is probably the Elden Beast. I don't think that I think the best track in Souls is Gwyn's theme by far. Like I think it's that's actually so much better than any of the other music. It's just it's a genuinely good piece in its own right. Uh, but personally, my my favorite track is probably Elden Beast. Um, that might change in the future. Um, it, it's actually it's close between that and Return to Slumber, which is what I'm going to get to. Uh, okay. Let's just quickly go through some more. Um, I want to get through some of these pretty quickly, but I just, I got to, I got to point out just how dumb they are. So, Armor Spider, we don't really need to talk about Armor Spider. The, again, it gets the generic treatment. I mean, I don't think the original track is like amazing, but um, it just gets turned into more generic stuff, which makes it sound more similar to... Okay, now I guess I got to play it now because I'm talking about it. Here's the original Armor Spider track. Okay, and the... And the remake. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's just a random violin solo. and copying the melody without copying the mood. Action slop. Again, it's just take the uniqueness out of it. I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's the... I don't think it's a, like the original is not my favorite piece of music. I don't think it's a brilliant piece of music. It does have an unusual instrumentation, which sets it apart from the other tracks. And when every track in your game starts to be orchestrated the same way, when it uses the same kind of action-y figures with strings going, do 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 uh, and, and, you know, there's some, some taiko drums or something in the background, like, chung, chung, you know, making everything sound really action-y and exciting. And you add the choir to it to make it really epic. Uh, and you've got some horn melody to make it really epic and movie music-like. When every track is done that way, it doesn't matter how good the music is because it's not achieving the effect that that track is supposed to achieve. The point is, it's... Those tracks in the original, like you could say that you could criticize them. They're not 
This isn't like we're talking about Beethoven or something. Like this isn't the most genius music ever written. But the point is that they achieve a certain effect and that effect is not achieved in the remake. Uh, a taiko drum is a, a Japanese type of drum. They're like really huge, basically like a, a an uber bass drum, just super giant bass drum. Um, and I think probably Hans Zimmer was like the first to start using them in movie soundtracks, and now they're just all over movie and video game soundtracks because because they're like really big drums that sound very. Uh, sort of go chung, very very deep aggressive sound uh let's see what are we on oh we're gonna go to dragon god again just another example of like misunderstanding here's the original dragon god okay and by the way if you haven't played demon souls now there's a lot of hate for dragon god personally i don't i don't think it deserves that much hate i think it's not perfectly executed but it's still it's still different. It's still a unique experience to everything else. Um, it isn't on the level of like Bed of Chaos or anything like that. The point of Dragon God is it's a stealth mini boss. You've got a number of pillars. You have to sneak past them. You can't really fight Dragon God one on one. He's like a giant. You know, he's a thousand feet long or whatever. Uh, you have to sneak past him and shoot him with these uh, environmental harpoons. So it's about sneaking. And just think about that concept. Like this is something that doesn't exist in any of the other bosses. It's no, nowhere else in the game. The concept of sneaking. And see if you can hear that in the music. You got string pizzicato. And you've got this phrase, three notes with a pause. Boom, boom, boom. It's like you're tiptoeing three little steps, and then you stop, and then three more steps, and then you stop, right? This is sneaky music. Okay, so very, very fitting music, right? Very fitting music for a boss in which you're sneaking around. That sounds like it's it's uh that's that's the idea there. So how about the remake? Almost reminds me of Nutcracker. I can't think of the spot you're th thinking of. Here's the remake. Isildur, destroy the ring! <laughs> it's just so, so thoughtless. It's so thoughtless. How do you, how do you screw that up? The way and the way that you screw that up is you go, oh, what's this boss fight about? It's about a giant epic dragon. That's what you do, and that's the that's the level at which you stop thinking and you start writing the music. And it's it's literally that shallow. It's just going epic dragon, bro. It's so epic. It's so shallow. It's so shallow. 
And you know what this what this sounds like is let me see if I can bring this up. Maybe I'll get pulled if I start playing random No, I need to I need to I need to do this. Uh let's go to uh Let's see. Am I going to get pulled if I do this? I'll probably get pulled if I do this. I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, take my word for it. Go to about... Mm, maybe like... F five minutes into this piece. Right of Spring. And that's what the new Dragon God is based off of. It's... Uh, the only reason I'm mentioning that is because... That's totally inappropriate for what this fight is supposed to be about. It's just so... It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Maybe the arranger only saw pictures of the bosses and never actually played the game? Yeah. That's... That would be a reasonable conclusion to draw from the soundtrack. And... You would also have to suppose that either... Gavin Moore, the creative director, didn't communicate the feeling that was meant to be achieved from the music with each boss uh, to the composer, or that maybe they just never communicated. It is it is a Sony soundtrack, so it's not Bluepoint. The soundtrack is not uh, Bluepoint employees. It's Sony employees, uh, and... Maybe they just never communicated. I mean, I would I wouldn't be surprised when you have a, a the the types of giant uh, like thousand person teams that you have working on games now. Communication is like you, everybody knows this. If you if you try to go out with like a friend, uh, it takes you like two seconds to figure out a, a place to go to lunch. If you add on a third person, it takes you like five minutes. If you add on a fourth person. It takes you like 15 minutes to figure out where to go. If you've got a a group of like 10 people, like you're just never going to get to lunch because you will never figure out a place to go. The more people that you add into a situation, there's a huge downside is that is that you don't you aren't able to come to a decision easily. And you can't communicate all of the different things that you want to communicate to each other because now everybody has to communicate with everyone else and it takes exponentially longer. So when you have a huge, huge team, maybe they just never, they never even communicated. Maybe they like, they had an email once. Or probably Gavin Moore communicated a couple ideas, which he didn't really care about, to the, what was it, like the... There were so many different people. The senior director of music, who then communicated some random ideas to the head of creative music affairs, who then communicated those to the music affairs specialist and the senior music department coordinator and the project manager and the music department assistant. And then they communicated that to the, uh, the, uh, the producers of the score and who knows what else, the orchestrator. And like, there's so many people involved that, yeah, too many fingers in one pie, too many cooks sp spoil the OST. <laughs> exactly. It's, I, I'm not surprised that it's a mess. I'm just pointing out that even despite all that, like, if I was hired to write the music for a game or to arrange the music, for like, forget about writing the music for a game, to arrange the music for a game that already exists and is beloved by many people. I would not be... I, my first thought would be, hey, let's listen to the original soundtrack and figure out what they were trying to do. And let's figure out why do people like this game? And what's the emotional impact that the game had on them? What did they take away from the game? And let's try to make music that replicates that and and maybe improves it maybe i mean i'm i'm not against to the idea that they should try and improve the game like yeah by all means but do it with humility and do it do your due diligence don't be lazy fucks okay
Moving on. So in Latria, the prison of hope is a place where people, um, they sort of worship what they think is the Ivory Queen of Latria. The Ivory Queen of Latria is, well, the fool's idol is, it's a fool's idol. It's an idol for fools. It's not the Ivory Queen. It's a production of the old monk. So this soundtrack is contrasted against this very, it's this golden warm glow of the Fool's Idol's arena and this, this sort of elegant appearance that she has. There's something, you can imagine that the inhabitants, uh, you can imagine that the inhabitants of the Prison of Hope have genuine hope. And this is what is feeding the giant demon heart uh, that is powering the old monk essentially this is the the power of demon souls he's drawing on their false hope that's the idea so this is this soundtrack is meant to tell you there's something deeply wrong this is something deeply wrong with this Exactly. <laughs> okay, this is the part that annoys me the most. Because just this. Okay, where's the... Where's the, where's the piano notes? Where's the... Uh, Where's this? Like you're going slowly insane. Like this is a weird, creepy place that you're in, you know? And that, that's an idea that is, uh, it's, it, it came back in uh, Mikolash. It's that same like weird, creepy piano just going off in strange directions. It's very probably inspired by some of the music in uh, Angel's Egg. Uh, it's a very particular sound. Again, just, just not really caring to reproduce the effect of the original. Uh, Man Eater again, generic. Let's go to a really, really awful one. This is this is the this is just funny to me. It like it it just breaks me because it's so. It's so stupid. It's just funny. It becomes funny at this point. Okay, the old monk. Weird. 
weird off-kilter waltz. So it's a waltz, it's a dance. Creepy waltzes, always classic, like, weird, eerie vibes. And this one is, it's in phrases of three. Also, particularly the harpsichord, right? This is all it's a very creepy vibe. And it's not very active. It's more about... I mean, the old monk is not someone that you even fight, right? He's manipulating things from a distance. That's the idea. Yeah, exactly. It's a waltz because of the PvP. You're dancing with another player. That's the, that's the whole gimmick of this fight. You're dancing with another player. Okay. Let's check out the remake. Oh look, he's like a zombie guy. Isn't that so epic? Oh, it's a monk. Right. You're exactly right, Saucy Pup. This has no link whatsoever to the monk or what's happening. This is just a, a random piece of music. It has no relation to the... Uh, well, actually, okay. You want to know what the relation is, by the way, between these, these two tracks? Listen to the... That little thing. It's it's just they just took that melodic figure and turned it into a random like horror action music track. It's just what what the fuck? What the fuck is that? I just don't it has nothing to do with the setting, it has nothing to do with this situation, it has nothing to do with the previous music track. You just made up a whole unrelated piece of music to put in this game for for one of the arch demons as well. This isn't, this isn't like some minor boss. Like this is one of the the main bosses of the game, a pretty important character, like the most important character for this entire archstone. This is why sounds like Spider Man. Yeah, exactly. It's just so, so dumb. Uh, some of the others, like Adjudicator, Old Hero. Old Hero isn't actually terrible. Uh, it's still 
you know, there's some minor changes that I don't, I don't understand, but it's, it's not, it doesn't go as generic. Maybe I'll play a little bit of just the remake version. Also very weird that they made his sword gold, like him. It was very obvious, like, design decision to make his sword white in the original, to distinguish it from him so you could really clearly see it, whereas they just made it all gold. I don't know why. Martyr Lugarius's OST? I don't remember Lugarius's OST. Honestly, everyone goes on about how great the Blo Bloodborne OST is, but... Like, there are some great tracks, but a lot of it is very forgettable to me. At least this track isn't action music? Oh, I'm pretty sure that there's some choir. Yeah. But it's doing something a bit more ambient. It's like pretty much the only track in the game that does do that, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. I'm not going to say this is like a work of genius or anything, but... At least they avoided doing the horrific shit that they did to the other music. So I guess that's a plus. Uh, Storm King... Okay, again, there's a difference between writing a good track and writing a fitting track. particular mood being achieved here. Let's go to the other. is like that's a very cool track that music is very cool uh, like uh like the original sam raimi spider-man something like that very cool movie music it's not remotely like the original and it's a very different effect from the original and it's another example of it's another example of how they just refuse to be subtle. There's there's an absolute refusal to try anything at all remotely strange or eerie or all, all the other, you know, unsettling, uh, to use silence, to use a minimum, minimal complement of instruments, to use unusual combinations of instruments, 
to use, you know, highly melodic rather than highly textural kind of writing. It's just, it's a total, like every track has to use every instrument in the orchestra and the choir, and it has to be exciting and loud. That's kind of the, the sense that you get from the soundtrack. And I think, I mean, look, obviously I'm biased because I've played the original Demon Souls many times. But for the majority of those tracks, even if I don't exactly remember the, the precise melody, I'll remember the, the sort of the sound of the track. I'll remember, you know, like, oh yeah, Adjudicator, it's got that like weird wind, like oboe clarinet stuff going on it's like some weird uh like i don't remember exactly how it goes right now if i if i heard it i remember it but i just remember it's got that like these little little wind bits in it that made it sound weird and creepy and i remember that tower knight has the ha, 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 ha. you know it's got that laughter uh i remember that phalanx has that like and it always feels like you're just rolling for it. Like, I, I remember something distinctive about each track, for the most part. Uh, I remember Armor Spider has, like, that really weird, bouncy percussion stuff. Like, they, they all have something different going on. For the remake, like, if this was the... If I hadn't been listening to this explicitly comparing them, if I had just played the game and I'd never played the original before, I don't think I would remember any of those tracks. I think they would all sound just kind of, yeah, like, oh, yeah, that track was the one with the giant orchestra playing action music with choir, and the other track was also the, the track with a full orchestra and choir playing action music. And the other track was also the, the, the loud, noisy action music with choir and full orchestra, and that was the one, like, it's just all the same thing. Okay. We're going to continue. Leechmonger, Dirty Colossus. I'm not going to say much about them. Uh, I personally like the Dirty Coloss the original Dirty Colossus track a lot, just because it sounds like farts. This one. <laughs> That's just funny to me. Uh... Simple, using silence. Let's hear the next one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool boss track, but again... Gotta have that rhythmic beat. Gotta keep it action focused. Gotta keep you excited. You know, can't have you like just enjoy the atmosphere. Gotta keep you excited always. Gotta throw, you know, ex orange and teal colors in your face and special particle effects everywhere because you gotta be excited. You gotta be stimulated. Is you you don't want to just enjoy the atmosphere effort. That's that's boring. Zoomers aren't gonna do that. Imagine giving Epic Choir for Leechmonger? You want to imagine it? There you go. You don't have to imagine it anymore. Yeah, uh, the strings sound like flies. No, I mean, it, that's a cool idea. Again, it's, it's like the anvil uh, in Flameworker. Like... They did try. They did try something. I'm not just saying they didn't try. Like, I want to be clear. I don't think that the remake's music is bad music in isolation. And I don't think that they didn't try to do something interesting with it. I think that they mostly failed. And I think that they it has nothing to do with the context. And it doesn't... 
It doesn't have any contrast and it doesn't have any atmosphere. But that doesn't mean it's terrible mu like the individual tracks in isolation. Yeah, I, I I would probably listen to the the Storm King track. Uh I I think, you know, there's a little bit too much of the percussion stuff, but it's not bad music. Okay. I want to get to the end because this to me is the absolute worst misunderstanding, arrogance, incompetence, just everything about it is so cringe. So, spoiler uh, for Demon Souls. At the end of Demon Souls, you fight the False King Lond. And then you go below the Nexus and you fight the true King Alant, who is inside the Old One. And after you beat the true King Alant, there are two endings that you can achieve. You can let the Maiden in Black lull the Old One back to sleep. Or, this is a sort of secret ending because it's not expressly laid out for you. That's the... Lulling the old one back to sleep is what the game presents to you as the ending. But there's a secret ending, which is that you can kill the Maiden in Black. And you essentially take the place of Alant. You get to be the master of Demon Souls. Uh, you become the one who craves souls. Now, depending on which ending you get, the credits for the game will play... A different music track. So if you allow the Maiden in Black, or rather, if you let the Maiden in Black lull the old one back to sleep, the track that plays in during the credits is called Return to Slumber, which makes sense because she's lulling the old one back to sleep. It's a track that has a solo female vocalist singing essentially a lullaby which is lulling the old one back to sleep. If you kill the Maiden in Black, the track that plays during the credits is called One Who Craves Souls, which is describing yourself, because you crave souls so much that you decided to kill this poor Maiden and take her soul for yourself. Uh, in that music track, there is no female soloist. There are no vocals. It's purely instrumental music. Because the difference between those two tracks is meant to reflect the fact that the Maiden in Black survives in one ending and she doesn't in the other. In one ending, where she survives, she's singing in the music. She's singing. Like, that's her singing the track. She's singing a lullaby to the old one. In the other track, she's not singing. Right? So the idea there is you have a... A vocalist, you have a voice, a single voice in one track, that's the Maiden in Black, and in the other track, you have no voice, because there is no voice. You have, you have killed everyone. You have taken ev everyone's voice away from them because you've killed them all, and you've taken their souls. That's the idea with the end. So let's just play a little bit of each one. Here is the original Return to Slumber.
God, that's so good. So there's a couple things going on in that track. You can look at the instrumentation. So you've got strings, piano, and oboe. And that's very particularly chosen because oboe has this plaintive sound. So, you know, in the middle section, it's like passing off the melody with, with Kokia, with the soloist. Uh, and it's got that very almost like nasal constrained kind of sound quality to it. That's that plays into it. It's all very soft. It's all very undramatic. It's very soothing because it's a lullaby. It's lulling the old one to sleep. It ends on that, uh, what you call a, a minor major seventh chord, which is, uh, the, the James Bond chord. It's a very, uh, uncertain type of chord and and she just trails off right because it's like the it's almost like the song doesn't completely end it just stops you stop hearing it at least so and, be, and that's because well the, the old one can go back to sleep but eh, same thing can happen in the future you're not really fixing anything like there's no ending of this game where you kill the old one or where you know the soul arts completely die out never to be used again uh there's there's no ending that like solves the state of the world you're just you're you're fixing things for now maybe or maybe you're not uh that's the idea with the and also i should say that you know kokia she has a very particular style of singing like she starts out very childlike it's very innocent and almost naive she sounds young and then at certain points it just gets a little bit more dramatic and and she you know opens up opens up for, for uh, vibrato and and it becomes a little bit more full-bodied uh, in the voice it's very particular chosen moments so that's uh return to slumber now we have the remake. So the first thing I point out is her, this is obviously the voice of a much more mature woman. Uh, you know, maybe late 30s, early 40s. Not someone that you could really imagine th th this voice is coming from the Maiden in Black. Uh, it's very clean. It's very technical. And I mean, it's, she's got a beautiful voice. I don't have anything against it. This doesn't give the impression of being the Maiden in Black singing, which is the idea that is intended. We have no more oboe. And no more piano.
Okay, I, I, I have to stop it here because this is so, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. I mean, it's it, like an idiot wrote this section. This is, I, I, maybe this isn't obvious to, to if, if you're not listening carefully, or maybe you notice that something sounds a little weird and you don't know what it is. It's because they literally forgot to include a note of the harmony that changes the harmony. So when you listen to this track in the original, uh, this bit, so we were, we're passing off these lines, da, 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 and it's going through this little progression of each time we're in a different harmony, ba, da, 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 like, okay, the oboe does this, and then the singer responds with this in a different harmony. Okay, now here. Okay, so you hear that that progression. I'm just going to play it once more. So you just listen to how this sounds and like where the where the harmony is leading. That chord. Okay, so that's the that's the cadence that it's leading to. We'll just listen to this in the remake. Do you hear that? Do you hear that that's just a different chord? Listen to this again. Listen to how happy this chord sounds. Ah, uh, just happiness. Right? It's just like, oh yeah, we arrived. We just arrived on that chord. There's no B-flat. This F major chord right there. Just a nice happy F major chord. Not what it's supposed to be. Uh. Leading somewhere? Oh, not not there yet. And now we get there. And then we go in a different direction. That's the idea, right? See so this chord. There's a B flat that's resolving to an A. And that's because the chord isn't, we're not arriving yet. It's still leading to the end of that phrase. And they just forgot to include that. And it just sounds so bad. This sounds so bad. It's just terrible writing. Like there's, this isn't a, an issue of of interpretation or or you know in the context of the game or something this is bad writing this is bad writing this and you know the reason for it is because they took the oboe out because of what oboe isn't cool or something i don't know uh so they took the oboe out and they just gave it a few little decorative things instead of playing the melody and so they Put the melody in the cellos, but of course that means that now the melody's down two octaves. So the the voicing of the chord completely changes. This sounds so bad. Like what? That sounds so bad. That sounds so bad. That's just bad writing. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing to, to hear that. I, I know this this is probably a tiny detail that you're like, oh, what? I don't. That's embarrassing writing. Like, and then also they follow it up with parallel octaves as well, which is which is embarrassing as well. Okay, we're just gonna go on for now. I just want to point that out because it's so bad.
yeah, that's right. We went way too long without the choir. We gotta have a choir. We missed the epic choir, guys. We gotta throw in the epic choir again. For this peaceful lullaby, we need an epic choir. I'm pretty sure the the old one's asleep now. I think you, I think that put him to sleep. <laughs> That's just so stupid. It's so stupid. Like, oh, we, oh man, we got to make it epic at the end. We got to make it super epic, bro. It's so epic now. We got this epic choir. God, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. I just can't get over how stupid that is. They killed my favorite song in the stupidest way imaginable. Okay, so you know how there's another track that plays in the credits? And the thing about that track is that it doesn't have voice because there's no, there's no, there's no person, right? It's, this is a, it's reflecting the difference between the Maiden in Black living and they made it in black not living. So let's hear what one who craves souls. Like, here's the evil ending, right? If you decide to kill the maiden in black, you want to crave souls, uh, here's what you get. This is the sound that you get. By the way, you notice that the melody there, ba -da -da -da, it's like a mirror image of the of the good ending where we get da 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 da. Now we get da 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 da, right? So it's like oh, one's going up because it's a little bit happier, and one's going down because it's a little bit sadder. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, so it's it's. It's purely instrumental. We've got timpani, strings, piano. Very simple. It's very dramatic, but again, in this sort of stoic, uh, stark way, very precise. There isn't a lot of noise. It's just, it's it's like a, well, I don't know. It's like a march almost, right? It's very, it's very exact. Okay, so now we get the remake. So now we get a violin soloist, which, like, 
You'd use that to represent a singular person, like an individual. So is this meant to be us? Or is this like, oh, this is the maiden in black died? What's, what's the idea here? Oh, and there's a choir. Why is there a choir? Why is this sad? Where did this music come from? What, what is this? You just made this up. This isn't from the original track at all. Oh, it's, it's happy music. It's victorious, isn't it? becoming the superhero of Demon Souls. So that one ends quietly. <laughs> that one ends quietly. It's they make it really epic and then it ends quietly. Uh, but the maiden in black, the lullaby, that has to end big with an epic choir. It's so again, I just thoughtless. Like there's zero level of thought going into the musical decisions. So here's the summary. Here's the here's the summary of the problems with the music of the Demon Souls remake. You can argue about the quality of the music in isolation, but the thing is the music isn't in isolation. Like we're listening to it apart from the game right now. That's not how you're meant to listen 
to a video game soundtrack. Like some video game soundtracks, okay, fine, they work as soundtracks that you can listen to if you really want to listen to them, but the point is that they're designed to be part of a cohesive experience. Now, the, the original Demon Souls, the music ranges in quality. Some of it is really interesting, some of it's very good, uh, some of it's not so good, some of it's less interesting. Some of it does a very good job of uh, depicting something narratively, and some of it is a little bit more generic and just accompanying the scene, let's say. Uh, in general, the, the qualities that make the original soundtrack interesting are that it's very good at contrast. Uh, for the most part, every track is unique. It uses unique instrumentation. Uh, it has a unique rhythmic figure, unique melody, something that sets it apart from the rest of the tracks. Uh, it has a very particular style, the, the soundtrack as a whole. It ranges from track to track, but generally speaking, the style is heavily inspired by Baroque music, like Bach and Vivaldi. Uh, it has that sort of stoic, stark quality to it. Um, a lot of simple percussion parts, mostly relying on the timpani, which gives it this sort of somber funeral type feel in, in many cases, like in Flame Lurker or in One Who Craves Souls or in the, uh, the beginning, the uh, intro narration. Uh, that's that's the, the the strength of it is is the contrast and this this stoic aesthetic which ties in with the general feeling that the game wants to provide you it's like you are a warrior in this horrible horrible world it's one of the most horrible worlds that FromSoft has created but you keep on going you keep on fighting through it and even though there is no ultimate good ending to anything you're meant to, you have to do the best with what you have. Like you can't be, can't play on tilt. You can't get angry about this. That's just, that's pointless. You have to deal with this, uh, stay calm, be methodical. That's the, the point of the game. Uh, it's meant to inspire a certain emotion in you without being melodramatic. It's subtler than that. And at its best, that's what the soundtrack does, is it's subtle, it's stoic, it's stark, it projects the right mood for the situation, it doesn't get distracting, it doesn't cover up anything. So now you come to the remake soundtrack, and the first you have the question of what should the remake soundtrack do? Well, one thing that they could have done is literally note for note, recreate the original music. That's, that's a possibility. I'm not saying that they should have done that. I'm just saying that is one thing they could have done. There was a score that existed. They had to print parts for the musicians. That score exists somewhere. Uh, Shunsuke Kida is still around. Like they, they could have, they could have done that. They could have brought in Shunsuke Kida to write at, or at least collaborate with the new soundtrack. He's not credited for that. He's credited as the original composer. He didn't contribute to the new music. They could have brought him in. Uh, now, if you don't do either of those things, you bring in someone who has compositional experience to arrange the soundtrack. And what they're going to do is uh, change certain aspects of the tracks in order to fit uh, the higher production quality and to make use of uh, tools that maybe didn't exist or were difficult to make use of at the time or just because you want to change the way something sounds. So at that point, you have to ask, well, what what is your priority? Is your priority to write a good piece of music or is it to write... Uh, a faithful rendition of the original, something that stays true to the original spirit? Or is it to write something that 
fits the game the new game because the game also looks different and also plays a little different uh i would say well probably all of those are good ideas so the remake soundtrack is uh generally speaking pretty well composed it's not you know it's not a total amateur except for that one chord in return to slumber which is just so stupid i can't can't stand that uh generally speaking the soundtrack is well written um i would say it's written it's well written in the sense that like a lot of generic hollywood movie action music is well written uh for instance like the marvel soundtracks a lot of those soundtracks are let's say like captain america does anybody remember ca music from captain america uh probably not uh or the music from thor not super memorable you know maybe people remember the avengers theme that one's pretty uh popular and alan silvestri is a very uh he's a veteran composer he's been around for a long time uh i think he was the one who did predator so you know he can create a, a memorable theme um but for the most part like marvel soundtracks are very unmemorable but that doesn't mean they're bad music like they still accomplish the job uh they're still well orchestrated they don't fall into any serious pitfalls usually um so that's sort of the level that i would talk about the demon souls remake music in terms of quality like this is not this is not john williams uh it's it's more like Hans Zimmer and particularly like modern Hans Zimmer not Lion King Hans Zimmer so it's it's uh it's like very decent quality movie style cinematic action music now the problem is that it's all that like that's and that's it is the entire soundtrack is cinematic action music and it is nothing but cinematic action music with very few exceptions there's nothing no interesting decisions are made there are no unusual instrumentation combinations no unusual decisions i've i mentioned a couple of them like the use of the anvil anvil for flame lurker or having the solo female uh, soprano for maiden estrella uh the uh a couple a couple of examples like that um you know you have the sort of bug sounding effects in the strings for dirty colossus or that sort of storm sound effect for the storm king so there's, there's some thought was spent into the narrative ideas behind these but at the sh most shallow level every single track with the exception of old hero every single boss track is loud it's loud it's aggressive it's got a very strong rhythmic pulse that often uses uh a, an intense combination of percussion instruments a lot of strings playing uh sort of subdivisions you know that sort of thing uh that is every track uh everything is meant to sound epic everything has choir I, I think every single track has choir i think it was every single track maybe maybe there's one uh pretty sure every single track has choir it loses all nuance it loses all of the narrative implications of the original so in my mind okay any track in isolation that can be a good track it's not a good soundtrack it's a terrible soundtrack actually because the point of the soundtrack is to form a cohesive experience with the other parts of the game and that's what it doesn't do so that's my thoughts on the music uh i'll just read a couple comments to finish up here Honestly, just play this music over footage of some Spider-Man movie. Yeah, exactly. Superman ending. They want you to kill the maiden that much? Maybe. I don't, I don't think they thought about that. 
And, and just to just to be clear about that point, the idea that I was explaining is that you have this very clear demonstration of what's there's a very clear idea in the original Demon Souls. If you kill the maiden, if okay, if you let the maiden in black lull the old one back to slumber, she sings a lullaby during the credits. Like it's very obvious that is her singing a lullaby to the old one. That's why it's soft. It's it's very relaxed compared to any of the other music. It's, it's there's nothing epic about it, and it trails off because it's just uh, you're just going to sleep. That's the idea, and the that's also the idea that. In contrast, the other ending where you kill the maiden in black doesn't have any voice. No one's singing because there is no one to sing. So when you add choir to both of those tracks and you make it epic, they, you totally missed the point. You totally missed the point. And I didn't even mention, by the way, which Ratatoskr did mention in his video, I did mention that the stupidest decision of all, which is making the... Uh, once a uh, royal mistress sing Return to Slumber. How idiotic do you have to be to make that decision? What, what, what were you thinking? Were you thinking at all? Like this is the lullaby that the maiden in black sings to the old one, like the god of this world. She sings to that to get him to go to sleep at the very end of the game. It's not even it's not even in the game in a sense. It's credit music, but this has a very specific narrative context. And now you're giving it to some random chick in Latria? Why? What is the reason for that? The reason is that they thought, "Oh, that's that's a cool song. That would be really that would be really cool, bro. You just put this here." It's so thoughtless. It's so thoughtless like all the all the art design decisions, everything about the game, even the uh, even the gameplay, like you carry over, you decide, Hey, we're going to copy all the gameplay. We're going to have inventory weight. Remember this one souls game that had inventory weight. Oh, but also you can send any item at any point back to stockpile Thomas in a way that doesn't make any kind of diegetic sense. Yep. Okay. So what was the point of having inventory weight? If it doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, how about pausing the game? You can just pause the game at any point. Oh, that Okay. It's so thoughtless. It's so thoughtless. And I, I, it pisses me off that people are sort of, that the attitude towards this remake is like, oh, well, it's just, it's just a good game. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's still a good game. Like, no, you should, people should be called out for their bullshit. When, when, when game companies do this shit, this is like, this is like the scummiest corporate, uh, corporate cash grab type of play. It's like, oh, the PlayStation 5 is coming out. We need a launch title. We're going to take this IP that we know will generate interest because it's an old IP that people love. And we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want with it. Uh, we'll, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You don't have to be respectful towards it because we know that people will come because it's, it's a popular IP. And it's a launch title, and it's going to showcase the power of the PlayStation 5. What, how many polygons can it draw and, and run at 60 frames per second still? Like, that's the reason that this exists. There is no other reason for it. it this isn't made by people who love Demon Souls. It's so... I, I just... I, it, it annoys the hell out of me that people are so complacent about shit like this. Like, the only way that this stuff stops happening, the only way that this keeps happening, is because everybody's okay with it. Everybody's okay with just, oh, yeah, you make a, a shitty remake that totally screws up the original and stops the original from being preserved uh, and and cherished. Uh, and it's made by people that don't really care. It's, it's exactly like what happened with 343, and I'm glad to see that people are finally, after three games, uh, understanding that uh, maybe 343 isn't isn't the greatest company. Like, wake up. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing.
<sighs> okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope this demonstrated why... Like, I, I know music... Um, I, I My background is in classical music. I've been doing that for like 25 years. So I'm I'm particularly oriented towards the music in a game. Uh, and I probably notice things that a lot of people don't notice and, and maybe don't care about, and that's fine. Like, I'm not saying, oh, you're, you're stupid if you don't get this. Uh, I, sometimes tiny little things bother me way more than they should. Um, I do think that generally video game music is is treated as being sort of unimportant or less important. Um, and, you know, it, it, I think that's because it's it's much harder to pin down in a lot of cases. You know, something like a gameplay mechanic, you know, if you've got a hitbox that is way bigger than, than what it's supposed to represent, it's like, okay, well, that's bad. The hitbox doesn't work. Uh, you can sort of pin it down to something very specific. Uh with music it's it's hard to say well like well this is a different mood it doesn't sound right it doesn't have the right feeling or something you know it it generally has to be a lot vaguer so i have tried to be pretty specific here because i think that music it's a craft like any other it's not just a matter of subjectivity like there is there is there is a craft to it. There is you can do it better or worse, especially when you're talking about a specific situation where the music is accompanying something. You can do that better or worse. Uh, and I I hope what I'm communicating is that this remake it does that badly. It does its job badly. And the re and you know there's definitely a lot of craft in the way that they wrote the music but not in how that music applies to the thing that it's supposed to apply to so that's the that's the point i'm trying to make anyway this is uh this is all kind of a prequel to my upcoming video which has been in production for however many years now on the music of dark souls where i'm going to talk all about that uh so Keep an eye out for that whenever I can finish editing and stop incessantly revising my script. Uh, so, uh, anyway, thank you guys for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope this is a. Uh, I hope I was fairly convincing. Uh, oh, Binding of Isaac. I've heard a lot about Binding of Isaac. I've never played it. So that's interesting. I will have to... I forgot about that game, actually. I, I'm going to have to play that. Oh, no. The the uh, the Kitamura Crucifixion is... It, that's a whole nother thing. I can't put that in my dark... It's That would be like four hours long if I, if I put that in my video. That'll have to be part two. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble. Uh, go and watch Ratatosker's video. It's a great video. Highly recommend. Uh, he's much more succinct than I am. Uh, and he, he made some great points. Uh, favorite Elden Ring piece is Elden Beast. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>